Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, talk, this recording uh, for secure code development and lessons learned from HCD Security Edit. My name is Sadhu Zala. I am a senior software engineer at IBM. And in context of this talk, I am one of the HCD project maintainer. And I have Hitoshi Midake with me. Uh, he is a site reliability engineer at Indeed. And he's also one of the project maintainer for the HCD. All right, so in this talk, we basically will uh, briefly cover, you know, a uh, couple of the best practices, like identifying the, you know, areas where you should be paying more attention as far as security uh, of your project, your software is concerned. Uh, we'll talk about code analysis, uh, and, you know, then we will uh, have uh, Mitaki uh, talk about uh, the security model, we'll talk about uh, some of the vulnerabilities uh, examples that uh, you know we they are real life examples that we run uh, while uh, doing the HCD security audit, and then we'll talk about uh, you know working with GitHub uh, to to publish CVs, uh, and then we'll conclude the talk. Uh, we will not go into the you know the, the full software development lifecycle and security. We will pretty much you know focus on the coding aspect uh, you know other things uh, are out of scope for this talk so all right um, so there are a couple things that we really want to emphasize here you know as far as the uh, secure coding practices are concerned the first one is you know identify uh, you know high security risk areas right that you want to pay a special attention um, and you know how do you do that? Well, refer to your project architecture, right? Uh, your software architecture that will help you to identify those areas where uh, uh, you know that uh, it needs a special attention. Um, and we'll talk more about uh, uh, those checklists in the next slide. Uh, then we'll talk about you know uh, the most important part, right? The code assessment. Uh, there are like. Uh, two main uh, methods, you know, automated uh, code assessment using the automated tools and doing the code review manually. Um, you want to make sure that you define the role of the assessment team upfront, right? So that will help you as you go forward with the process. And um, you also want to make sure that you plan on how do you uh, how you will be addressing the findings, right? Uh, in short term, like you know, as soon as possible, and then. Uh, have it uh, planned for the longer term, something that you can, uh, you know, uh, apply so that uh, in future you can prevent any 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 of these issues that you ran into it as part of your code review. And then, you know, depending on your project, depending on your software, uh, you may want to plan uh, on on you know publishing the CVEs, right? Uh, you, you may not need, you may. Um, so you decided, but CVEs, uh, they help you, uh, you know, typically uh, to disclose uh, any security flows with your software uh, publicly, right? It helps the consumer of your software, your project to stay relevant. Um, all right, so, you know, the things we'll talk, they apply to, you know, pretty much uh, any development environments, you know, any programming language that you are using, but, uh, for this talk, we will use uh, you know, Golang and uh, the HCD project as an example. Okay. All right. Um, so I mentioned earlier that it's very important uh, to identify the uh, the areas that you think are, you know, critical, uh, crucial for your uh, project security, right? So here is a list of uh, some of some of these um, areas, right? Uh, you can have more. Uh, than what I'm gonna mention here. But uh, these are some of the things that you definitely wanna uh, keep in mind uh, while you, uh, you know, worry about the security of your, your project, your software, right, your application. So as you know, uh, the first steps for, you know, security or software security is, you know, it starts with authentication, right? So uh, for, external users for internal users you know regardless make sure uh, you have a, a, a good authentication method 
uh, in place, right? Um, and then, you know, you, you are doing a lot of things like, you know, not just accepting any password, right? Uh, have some validations there, password length, and, you know, that kind of things. And the, the follow-up step is uh, authorizations, right? So once user get authenticated, you're just making sure that they only have access to where they are authorized, right? So, you, you know, using like a role-based access control. Um, TLS certificates, you want to make sure that you have an encrypted uh, communication, right? And uh, you don't allow the monkey in the middle of interface. Uh, input or data validations, you know, validate all uh, input parameters, right? Um, you know, data type, length, range, whatever you can think of, uh, do the uh, proper validation, right? Uh, file permissions, it's another important area. Uh, you know, make sure that while creating new files, while working with any existing files, directories, uh, you are uh, checking and handling the permissions, you know, and pay special attention to any third party libraries or tools that you are using for file management. Uh, we will actually show you an example later in this talk. Error handling, uh, that's another important uh, area for the overall health, the security of the project uh, or software. So make sure that, uh, you know, accidentally uh, you're not leaking any information that can help uh, you know, hackers, attackers, right? Um, for example, the password. Um, and then logging, right? Uh, anything that you think uh, can helpful towards uh, identifying any security issues, uh, you know, uh, alerts, right? You, you should be logging it. Uh, you know, that can help you with the auditing purpose later on, like where the request is coming from, uh, who is sending the request, right? Um, data exposure, uh, to make sure that you are not exposing any sensitive data. Uh, so keep that in mind. And, you know, the last but not least is uh, if you are using a third party tools, uh, then make sure, uh, you know, you, you, you use their latest release, right? And you keep eye on any CVE advisories, okay? Uh, all right. Um, so code analysis, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that that is critical uh, for the, uh, you know, overall security of uh, your code, right? Uh, just making sure that, uh, uh, you, you know things up front while your development or you know after your code's in place, right? Make sure you, you do the assessment, right? Um, and there are two main ways, um, whether it's going to be an automated way using the tools or you can do the manual code review. So when you talk about automated tools, you know, you have, uh, you know, either it's going to use the static tools, right? That can uh, prevent, uh, you know, uh, you know, mistakes that can, you know, if not directly, uh, maybe indirectly impact your security uh, of code, right? So for example, like variable shadowing, you know, the unreachable code, right? So um, I'm sure, you know, most programming languages, they have uh, tools uh, specific to language, right? For Go, you have uh, actually a whole list of uh, tools available. I have provided link here. Uh, you can take a look uh, to see the whole list, but like, you know, tools like go wait, static check, you should be using. And then uh, dynamic tools, right? So like fuzzer, right? Uh, that can f help you find uh, bugs by, you know, they by automatically injecting uh, you know, randomly, uh, injecting uh, data and, and, you know, uh, find, uh, you know, different kinds of uh, bugs based on their, the injection, data injection. Uh, the second thing is manual code review. Uh, you know, tools are great. Uh, they can take a look at the code automatically, you know, um, and, and point out to the possible issues, but definitely a human needs to verify those issues, right? And make sure they are the real issues. And, you know, also, uh, the, the development team, they should be, you know, doing the thorough code review uh, of all the areas we talked about, right? And make sure 
that it looks good to them, right? Um, and keep in mind that there is no alternative to you know manual code review, right? That is critically important. Um, all right, so you know with that, uh, you know before we talk more about HCD security model, before we talk about uh, some of the examples of the vulnerabilities that we ran into uh, as part of the audit, right, and and you know how we address them. Let me just briefly mention about etcd. You might already know it, right? That etcd is an open source uh, distributed key value store. Uh, it, uh, you know, provides you uh, consistency and high availability, uh, and it is used to store uh, critical data of a distributed system. So, for example, Kubernetes store all its cluster data uh, in etcd. The diagram here, uh, it just shows a single node etcd cluster. Uh, as you can see, etcd use raft uh, consistency algorithm uh, to maintain the replicated states and the data uh, are persist uh, persistent, right, uh, stored in disk. Uh, typically in productions, uh, you would use a three to five node cluster. Uh, the etcd is, a, it's a, you know, uh, it's a CNCF project, and you can learn more about it on etsy.io. Uh, and the etsy community, they love new contributors. You know that helps uh, grow the growth of the project. The you know makes the project better. So you know um, if you're interested, please contribute. Uh, you can find more details on contribution guidelines and you know uh, other things uh, on the development environments and whatnot on the etsy GitHub repo. Um, all right, with that, uh, I will hand it over to Metaki to talk about its a security model and you know, some of the examples. So, Metaki, to you. Okay, uh, let me introduce the security model of ETSD. Uh, ETSD clients and ETSD servers communicate with gRPC over TCP. It's also possible to use gRPC proxy for multiplexing ETSD clients. Etsy servers use a specialized HTTP protocol named Raft HTTP. Uh, and the TCP connections used for gRPC and HTTP protocols are encrypted and authenticated with TLS if a cluster follows the recommended configuration. We also have a component named Gateway. This is a component which only relays TCP connections between clients and servers. This is a component which only helps discovery of Etsy cluster. Could you go next? And if a user needs more fine-grained access control keys, etcd provides ALBAC-based authentication and authorization as an optional feature. With this feature, uh, we can grant permission to read and or write of a specific key range to users. When the cluster uses this feature, the servers have two options for authenticating and authorizing users. One is using authenticate gRPC method. In this case, clients invoke the method during initializing the client plot object. Information of authenticated user is stored in a JOT token returned by the server. Another option is using common name field of TRS certificate. In this case, uh, no password based authentication is required. Um, this mechanism also supports limiting uh, special administrative operations like membership change. The special user root is the only user which is allowed to execute such operations. Could you go next? Then let me introduce the security audit project. Uh, it's the community performed a security audit last year. CNCF supported this third party audit and trailer bits of this project. You can download the full report of the audit from the URL. Uh, we will introduce uh, some findings from the report. Could you go next? The first example is an issue related to logs. ETD had a problem of uh, inaccurate logging related to failed authentication attempts for users, which can only be used with common name based authentication. As I mentioned earlier, ETD supports uh, multiple user authentication mechanisms for our work. Username plus password based approach and common name of TRS certificate approach. 
especially for the latter one, uh, it's really supposed to create users which only support common name based authentication, which doesn't support username plus password based approach. When a client tries authentication with password for such a user, it's really log uh, isn't useful for understanding that the client gave a wrong password or user gave a password to no password user. It is harmful for auditing failed attempts uh, for, from the logs. We fixed the issue by adding a new error code for representing such a failed attempt and made the log clearer. Could you go next? Sure. The next example is related to gateway. Gateway relays TCP connection between SV client and server. The component doesn't validate uh, acceptance of TRS connection to its endpoint. It only checks uh, TCP reachability during initialization. So if the, pain, if the endpoints are misconfigured and point a malicious server accidentally, uh, they can receive uh, data sent by the clients if the clients don't use TLS properly. Gateway is a component which only helps discovery of its leak cluster and uh, doesn't terminate TLS connection. Using TLS is the responsibility of the client. Uh, we fixed the ambiguity of this program in the documentation. Could you go next? Yeah, sure. The next example is related to metric. Uh, total number of database keys compacted metric was never changed. This is because the code of compaction lacked a statement of increment the variable for the metric. The issue can result in uh, misunderstanding about the resource usage of SV. At the time of auditing, the issue was already fixed in the master branch, but the fix wasn't reported to the stable releases. Okay, uh, could you go next? And I'd like to hand it. Sure. Uh, you want me to talk on this, Midagi? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you so much again. Uh, so, all right, a uh, couple more examples. Uh, Midaki did explain a few of them. I'll, I'll talk about a couple more examples here. Uh, all right, so very, uh, you know, uh, small snippet here, um, which is basically doing nothing but creating a new directory by calling uh, make dir all. Do you see any security ish issue in this snippet? Well, I wish we were talking in person uh, and I could see the raised hands, uh, you know, besides uh, Mitaki smiling. Uh, uh, but uh, we're recording, so I will go ahead and uh, show what's wrong here, right? Well, so the problem here is if the provided directory path is already existing, right? It's, it's an existed directory, then the make dir all does nothing and it returns nil. So then the flow continues, right? Uh, with nil, you, you are continuing the flow. That's what uh, the project was doing. And uh, that's not something we were expecting, right? Uh, because what happens if there's an existing directory with, uh, you know, 777 uh, uh, permission mode, right? Uh, somebody could have created that directory up front with extra permissions there um, and you know with some malicious desire and you know could hurt uh, the, the the project uh, uh, you know running at CD eventually right so the fix was you know to make sure that if the directory exists then uh, it has the desired permission if not then you know we will who will consider that as an error case, right? Um, so that's how uh, it was fixed, right? Uh, it was pretty quick fix, small fix, but could have a uh, uh, you know, uh, security related uh, problem if not handled. Um, so another snippet here, uh, another small snippet, you know, we, we tried to put uh, some of the smaller uh, issues here. Uh, 
so data validation right um, remember i mentioned earlier the input data uh, validation uh, is very important and you want to basically validate you know everything right uh, if you don't then that could hurt the running uh, project right so the parse compaction retention function uh, do you see what's wrong here uh, any security issues well again i uh, wish we had to raise hands but let me go ahead here so the problem here as you can see the string conversion functions right uh, the return value can be negative and uh that's not an error case okay it can read a negative value and that's not an error case and as you could see the project you know we weren't handling the issue right and we were just checking the error and if that's new we will just go ahead and you know continue the flow uh the secret issue here was if someone uh you know who has that access right that that role who could uh misconfigure the auto compaction compaction retention uh by setting it to negative or you know maybe accidentally right but if it's set to negative value then you know that could impact uh the hcd uh you know the process right uh, it may not work properly as expected right uh because that will be that could be like a forever compacting uh, you can fill up the disk space and whatnot <clears throat> so the solution again here was simple you know just not to accept any negative value and you know uh, handle it uh, properly the other thing i would mention here is uh, the documentation right we, we need to make sure uh, that you have a, a proper documentation uh, for the for the you know, for the for the software right in the code uh, you may not see that as an you know direct impacting direct impact on your security uh, uh, for the project, but but you know three of the report issues that we had in uh, HCD security audits they were related to documentations and and you know, naming of functions. So you know we had a couple of functions they were uh, having a you know, misleading name um, again that happens accidentally and you know something that were not caught as part of uh, you know code review while you know those pull requests right um, and then we had uh, uh, a couple of uh, you know misleading uh, documentation right description so you know that that as i said you know that that ended uh, up as in three reported issues by the auditing team uh, so you know the lack of documentations or not enough coverage right or poor naming of functions they can create confusions right during the code review process and that can impact productivity and it can also mislead users so uh, you want to keep in mind that uh, you know you have a good documentation right the other thing i want to cover is uh, you know before i hand it over to midaki again is uh, uh this is something we learn as part of uh, uh the auditing process right uh as i as i mentioned earlier the cvs are important and uh you know they can uh basically help you to to you know disclose uh the security flaws issues publicly uh and so that the users of project software uh, stay relevant uh, the process can be confusing, uh, but we learned during this process, uh, you know, the security audit process, uh, that we can use the, uh, uh, a relatively new uh, features, which is integrated part of GitHub, uh, to request and publish CVs and advisories, right? So <clears throat> we just tried that and, you know, we loved it. That was uh, easy to use uh, and very, you know, this can be very handy for you if your project is hosted on GitHub, right? And you want to publish uh, advisories and you know uh, CVEs, right? Because <clears throat> now everything you're doing is is on GitHub. You know you're not going to like a Mitre website or you know <clears throat> anywhere else uh, to work on CVEs, right? The publishing uh, other stuff. 
So if you uh, have an admin admin access to your GitHub repo, right, uh, then you you will actually see uh, under the security tab <clears throat> an option to you know, to draft security advisory. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, the you know the other great thing here is you can actually privately discuss uh, and and you know the issues and fix issues with your code changes and it's all private and then you basically publish you know after having reviews uh, in your internal teams right uh, a team of maintainers for example right or interested parties and then you basically you know uh, push them uh, those changes to your repository. Uh, <clears throat> It also has a really good template. Uh, you know, it shows what kind of uh, vulnerability is it, right? The one that you are interested in publishing, uh, who is impacted, uh, you know, any any uh, problem uh, <clears throat> that has been patched. Uh, what version should uh, the user of software project? Uh, you know they should upgrade to right and and if there's any workaround so it, it it the template allows you to put like a good detail that can help uh, users understand the CVE so we wanted to mention because as I said this is something we learned uh, as as part of the security audit process okay um, with that uh, Mitaki would you would you like to conclude uh, the talk. <clears throat> yeah, uh, let me conclude this talk. Uh, yeah, writing secure code is challenging but possible uh, for your purpose. Uh, in code review and various tests and uh, various tools like static analyzer and further are uh, very helpful. And also, uh, although it costs time and budget, uh, third party audit is helpful for checking the status of the project. And also making documentation and logging is difficult. Uh, it's not trivial at all. And creating and publishing uh, CDs with GitHub is easy. Uh, let's utilize feature for managing security issues. And also uh, less popular features can be a source of problems. In this case of security, uh, SAD security audit, uh, multiple issues were found in Gateway, uh, which, is, which isn't used heavily. Uh, we need to be careful about such features and think before adding new features for making the entire project secure. Um, so that could you? Yeah, all right. Well, th uh, thanks, Miraki. Let me, this is the last slide we have. So <clears throat> uh, uh, we want to thank you, uh, you know, uh, Many folks here, all the contributors of ATCD, all the maintainers, right? Uh, especially want to thank uh, Siang Li, Gyo Li, Jingyi, and Brandon Philip. They are maintainers, and they were, uh, you know, uh, integrated part of, uh, uh, you know, working with uh, the security issues that that we resolved that came out of the ATCD security uh, audit. Uh, we want to thank CNCF for. In sponsoring the uh, the audits, I uh, want to thank Trail of Bits for <clears throat> conducting the audits. Uh, they have great uh, materials, you know, um, blog posts, right? Uh, that that can be like a really big, uh, good learning resource for security uh, understanding the security uh, of the project. Uh, we want to thank OWASP. Uh, we we you know, they have a lot of good practices and other materials, so we did refer them. Uh, those materials we definitely want to thank our employer um, IBM and indeed uh, so, and we want to thank you all of you who, you know, who are watching this video all right well thank you so much with that I think uh, we will end the talk Midaki that sounds good <clears throat>